everybody, Erica Sirwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs. This week I am using the Festive and Fun stamp set from the 2023 Holiday Mini Catalog from Stampin' Up. This is my favorite kind of stamp set, cute animals and black line images that I can use my Stampin' Blends to color. I'm going to have four projects total this week on my blog, so if you're looking for inspiration to use this set, make sure you click the link here on YouTube, back to my blog, and check out the other ideas. This card today is a fun fold, and I'm gonna untie the ribbon and show you exactly how it opens up. All right, so it opens like this, and then like this. And we're gonna put a little gift card holder, right? Or a gift card, yeah, a gift card holder to slide a gift card in right there. So you can see I've even put designer series paper on the inside, which is kind of fun. All right, so I think the first thing that maybe we should do is our coloring. Since he is the star of our card, let's go ahead and do that. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna use Stampin' Blends. They are my favorite coloring medium. Um, they are alcohol ink markers. So I'm gonna use Memento Black Ink, and I'm gonna stamp this image on basic white. All right, now I'm gonna pull up my chair because I color better when I'm sitting down. And I usually stand up when I record my videos. All right, let's start with our cute little giraffe. I'm gonna use Daffodil Delight Light. And the spots on him are gonna be brown crumb cake, so I'm not gonna worry about trying to go around them because brown is darker than yellow and we can just color right over them. All right, so I'm just gonna go through carefully staying in the lines. And um, I am using the bullet tip end of my marker. That's my preference. Um, play around with yours, see what you like best. Um, I do find on images like this, I do stay in the lines better. I always think, oh, I'm gonna use the very end of my brush tip and then I don't and I get out of the lines and I make a huge mess. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna trick myself into thinking I can use the brush on this. The brush is good for large images um, where you're filling in space. The brush tip is also good for um, flicking color if you're kind of doing some blending. Um, it's also good for flicking dots of ink. That's what I use the brush in for. Some people like to use the brush in. Uh, maybe they have a steadier hand than I do on small images. All right, so I've taken Crumb Cake Dark and um, colored in those spots. Now, one thing you wanna be careful of here is adding too much ink to your image so that it starts to bleed out of the lines. But I do wanna add in some darker Daffodil Delight around. I'm gonna go in under the hat there, kind of creating a little bit of a shadow on the left side of his neck maybe over here like this. And again, this is Daffodil Delight Dark. Anywhere anything is overlapping, I'm gonna add in some dark, okay? And then, very carefully, I'm gonna take my light and just kind of blend that ink over in here. Again, be real careful as you're adding ink because you can um, put so much ink that it starts to bleed out of the lines. One thing that might be smarter to do than what I just did is to do all the spots, move away, let them dry, work on something else, and then come back and do the Daffodil Delight part. But if you're careful like I was, you can stay in those lines. All right, now let's take Old Olive for our tree. And I am gonna add some shading to this tree as well. I know some people like to add the dark color first and then come back with the light. I am the opposite. I like to do the light color first and then come back with the dark. So I'm just gonna take Old Olive and add it in. I'm being real careful. See how I'm kind of like flicking the color in on the tree, trying not to get out of the lines. When I have real little spots like around these ornaments, I'm just gonna kind of flick that color in it also helps me to stay in the lines. All right, let's get down to the bottom. And then I'm gonna take my dark 
And I'm gonna add in some dark on the left side. We added dark to the left side of the giraffe. So I'm assuming the light source is coming from the right side. So I'm gonna add dark underneath anything that's overlapping, so like the ornaments, and some of the segments of the tree, like right here, it would be darker underneath. All right, and just kind of flicking that color in. Maybe down here on the bottom too, and we'll go under here like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back with my light and just blend all that dark color back in together. Leaving, you wanna leave the tips of those top sections lighter because they are catching the light more than these parts underneath. Add a little bit down here like that. All right, there we go. Um, let's see, while we have our old olive, let's do these um, holly berry leaves right here. You can um, add color to the ornaments if you'd like. Um, let's do now real red. And I think I'm just going to use real red dark up here on his hat. And again, small space. I got out of the lines a little bit. Um, let's do the berries and a couple of ornaments. Let's see, I'm gonna just try to do the stripe right there. See if you just flick the color, kind of dot, dot, dot in. It's a little bit easier to stay in the lines on these very small parts. All right, let's add some color to this one right here. Um, how about this one too? Okay, now I noticed I forgot his ear, so let's come back up here, add some color to his ear. And I'll put a little bit of dark inside like that. All right, let's grab the crumb cake. I'm going to use light crumb cake this time for the trunk of the tree and the little bucket that it's sitting in. And I think I'm going to do this basket. I don't want to add too many colors here because then it'll get kind of crazy and chaotic. So I'm adding in the, the crumb cake as a neutral. Um, let's see, I think that's it. Now all we really need to do is add some color to um, the light, the bulbs and stuff. I'm gonna use Pretty Peacock, and the reason I've chosen Pretty Peacock is because our designer series paper, A Walk in the Forest, has um, Pretty Peacock in it. So that's why you see Pretty Peacock. All right, I think I'm gonna have to bring back my Daffodil Delight and we'll do some of these like that. Okay, I think I've got everything colored. Um, I am also gonna take my Wink of Stella and add just a little bit of color to the star and maybe just, not color, glitter. It's just a little sparkle to the tree as well maybe to my ornaments. All right, now here's the optional part of this card. I'm gonna fussy cut this image, and that's a pretty big job for fussy cutting. If you are like Erica, no thank you, I am not even gonna attempt that. Just stamp him on the left side of this white piece. All the measurements for these pieces will be over on my blog. The reason I am cutting him out is because I have embossed that back piece and I'm gonna pop him up. But again, that is completely optional. I understand that this is a pretty significant piece to fussy cut. I know you can do it. It's not hard. You just stay on the outside of the black line, leaving a little bit of a white border. If you have these paper snips, then it's really easy. And again, I say this all the time. If your cutting is not perfect, which mine absolutely is not perfect, absolutely not, um, but when you mount it on a piece of white paper behind it, all of those white edges, oh, I forgot my giraffe's little hoof, all of those little white edges around the image just blend away into your background piece. So it's not too, too hard to make it disappear. Because really, 
especially we're embossing. So we're creating some texture and some interest for the eye. And the eye is gonna see that, and then it's gonna see the image. It is not going to see any crooked cuts that you may have. Now, another tip I have is as you go, let some of this white fall, fall away, okay? It'll, it'll get in your way and keep you from getting where you need to go. Also, stay in the middle part of your scissors and use your opposite hand to turn your paper, okay? All right, so I'm getting down into the inside. I wish we had dies for these, but we don't. If you have a electronic die machine, you might be able to cut this out with that, although I don't have good luck with those. So I just like to get my paper snips. I find it pretty relaxing and to just go for it. The more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it and the easier it's gonna feel. All right, now there we have our piece. Now look up here, I didn't cut in right here. Let's see if I can get in here a little bit better. Okay. I can get that piece out there we go let me add color to his hoof and then we are going to put him on this embossed piece there we go all right so i've already embossed it i can't remember the name of the embossing folder off the top of my head but i have a free supply list over on my blog today for you it'll have all the measurements this card has quite a few pieces you're going to need the measurements for and the complete supply list all right, now notice we need to put him over on the left side because we're gonna put this banner on the right side. If you've noticed in the catalog, one of the samples has this banner um, stamped like this. I thought it was so clever. Um, I use this banner a lot, but I usually use it this way. Well, the artist used it up and down, so I think that is just brilliant. Okay, so there is our focal point. Now, we do have another piece we're gonna stamp, but it's a lot easier. This is the piece that goes on the inside, and I'm just gonna stamp that sentiment in um, Pretty Peacock, right in the middle, a little something for you with lots of love for me, and it's crooked, so I'm gonna turn it to the other side. This is why we have, this is why we have two sides to our cardstock. So that when you mess up, <laughs> you can just flip it around and stamp the other side. The first side is just practice. All right, this little bird, we're gonna stamp down here in the corner like that. And then again, just this one doesn't need a whole lot of coloring. I'm just gonna color my um, hat and scarf. And then I'm gonna take my light crumb cake and color it in. I'm gonna leave those wings white. I'm gonna take my yellow, my Daffodil Delight dark. Add a little dot there for the beak. And then I always like to add just a little bit of a, a shadow so he's not just floating around in space. Okay, so we've got this mini card that's gonna fold up like this. And as you'll see, the ribbon needs to go across the top right here. So before you put your embossed piece on, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive there to hold it in place, um, and leave yourself enough space to tie your bow. Okay, like that, I hope I left myself enough. You know what, we've got a little, sometimes your ribbon has a little thing in it like this, that's where in the machine, they had to piece it together because, I mean, they can't make a forever, never-ending piece of ribbon. So if you ever see that, just pull it further up and uh, cut it off. It, it happens frequently. Not frequently, but every now and then. All right, now I'm going to sandwich that ribbon right there with this piece. And remember, it opens down. Okay, it seems a little weird, like I'm doing it wrong. And we're gonna put that right there. Now I have my circle punch. I'm just gonna use my two and a fourth 
And I've got a little strip here of a Walk in the Forest Designer Series paper. And I'm going to center it as best I can and just punch a little notch out of it. And then we're gonna take liquid glue and just go around the edges. You need to do a real thin line because you want your gift card to be able to fit in there. All right, and then that's gonna go right there like that. It looks like my piece is a little bit too big. So let's snip that off. Like that. Okay, so let's move that to the side and put the rest of this card together. This is a regular card base that I cut off right here in half. So this, see how it would open up like a card like that. So um, you're gonna cut it, cut two and three fourths inches off. And I'm gonna put this piece here. And then we've got the two pieces that go on the inside. And this paper is so fun, you can use any of the patterns in it for this. They'll all coordinate, they're all the correct colors. See, even the stripes would be great. Okay, now let me cut the end of my ribbon off. Well, I don't wanna waste it. Let's see if I can get this on here without doing that. All right, we're gonna put this here, right in the middle. like that okay and then that opens up like that and that goes up like that and then we're going to wrap the ribbon around the back and tie a bow and then last but not least we're going to add a few sequins Let's snip these off like that. Whoops, uh-oh. Let's try again. Like that. And grab those sequins, which were sitting underneath my markers right here. And we'll just add a few around our little guy. Give him some fun decorations. And there you have it, a fun, fun fold that also holds a gift card. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this project. Remember to check the other projects on my blog and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for joining me. Happy stamping. Bye-bye.